and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this tutorial, we will learn how to detect and remove doublets from Sora objects in R using doublet detection tools for single cell RNA seq data. Doublets are artifacts that occur when two cells are captured together and sequenced as one. This means that in your matrix for a given cell barcode, you are getting gene expression data from two different cells. So obviously these doublets can really confound your downstream analysis. So it's important to identify them during the preprocessing steps and remove them. There are many tools out there. I will leave you a few papers that compare them and benchmark different bioinformatic tools for doublet detection. But the ones that I find work best and are easy to implement are SC Doublet Finder and Doublet Finder. In part one of this series, we will use SC Doublet Finder. In part two, we will use Doublet Finder. And in part three, we will see how to combine the results from both and remove the high confidence doublets. I will not really go into the methods that these tools use to determine what is a doublet and what's not, but I encourage you to read the papers. There's links in the description below. And you can also check out the tools GitHub for further documentation on how to actually use the tools. As always, you can find the code I am using in this tutorial at biostatsquid.com, where you can also find a step-by-step -step explanation of the code. Or you can just get the entire script from biostatsquid's GitHub page. So if you're ready, let's dive in. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Sura object that's already pre-processed, meaning I did some preliminary QC, including filtering low quality cells and lowly expressed genes. If you're interested in a full single cell RNA-seq pre-processing tutorial, check out my other video. So for those of you who have already watched my other tutorials, you know I like to clean up my environment in case we have hidden objects in the background, free of memory, and we will also need to load the necessary libraries. In this function section, um, I will actually load the multiplet rates from 10x, as well as a custom function called get singlets, which I will explain later on when we cover doublet detection with doublet finder. So I will just run that for now, um, but we will cover it later on. Cool, so let's start by setting some relevant paths. I have a project path and inside it, I have a folder called data, which will be my input path. I will also create an output path called um, results, where I will output all my plots and tables from the analysis. I'm going to create an additional subfolder inside it called doublet detection. That's where all the doublet analysis results will be saved to. By the way, make sure these folders exist. You can create them manually in your folder system, or you can just do it with dear create if you want to do it from or. Okay, so we'll start by loading the data. Um, so we will load the Sora objects, uh, the object. As I mentioned, it's an intermediary Sora object, which I already processed and filtered out low quality cells and genes expressed in very few cells. Let's have a look at the metadata. As you can see, um, there are two samples. Um, this is, these are all the metadata columns I have. And if we check out the sample ID column, there are two samples, so cells from a kidney sample and cells from a lung cancer. This is important because most doublet detection tools work on a per sample basis, meaning that if your Sura object has more than one sample, you need to split it, find doublets in each of the samples, and then merge the datasets again. In this tutorial, I will use code so that it works if you have more than one sample. Great, so let's start by 
uh, detecting and analyzing doublets in single cell RNA sequencing data using the SC Doublet Finder package in R. SC Doublet Finder takes a single cell experiment object as input. So if you have your single cell RNA seq data in this format, then great. Otherwise, we need to transform the Seurat object into a single cell experiment which we can do really easily with a single cell experiment. Next, we will run single cell doublet finder or SC doublet finder. We can do this really easily by just using the function SC doublet finder as you see here. And the samples parameter is used to specify the column that has the sample IDs. In, in my case, it's called sample ID. Let's have a look at the at how many doublets and singlets we found so let's see the labels will be stored in the metadata column called sc doublet finder dot class so we need to wait a bit till the function finishes running it can take more or less time depending on the size of your sir object so how many cells you have Cool, so when the function finishes, you'll see that, so in our case, we found this number of doublets and singlets. If we take a look at the metadata, we see SC doublet finder outputs five columns, which are prefixed by the prefix SC doublet finder. Let's extract these columns onto a separate um, data frame. There we go. So these are the five columns and we have a sample ID, the labels, the score. You can read more about this in the methods, but it's essentially the final doublet score. So the, high, the higher it is, the more likely that that cell is a doublet. I again, won't go into the details of their method, but you can have a look at the documentation because you can fine tune the threshold to call a doublet based on the expected number of doublets. I'm going with the default settings this time. Now, if you started off with a Sura object like I did, we need to add the doublet labels back to the original Sura objects. So, object. so we will first extract the metadata and we will make sure that the data frames rows are the same as the ones in the Sura object. So we need to add the cell IDs as row names. So we will do this as setting the row names to the row names of the metadata um, data frame. So now you can see that the row names are the actual cell IDs. Great, so now we can add the metadata with the function add metadata. And I'm just going to add the SC doublet finder class but if you want to add the other columns as well, you can just remove this part that just selects this column. So feel free to also customize the name of the column. We can just check now the Seurat object. And as you can see, we have a new column in our metadata called scdoubletfinder.class, which has our singlet and doublet labels. And just to make sure, let's check again the number of singlets and doublets. There you go. And we can remove these temporary variables, um, which we don't need anymore, just to clear up um, a bit of memory. Cool. So now we can visualize some stats. For example, let's plot finding plots of quality control metrics. So the number of RNA features, RNA counts, mitochondrial percentage, ribosomal percentage, and hemoglobin percentage, split by SC doublet finder class and grouped by the sample ID. So let's run this. This will only give us some rough plots, some rough violin plots. As you can see, doublets seem to have a higher number of genes and read counts in general but we don't expect big difference in the mitochondrial percentage or the ribosomal percentage. So that can be a quick quality control check. 
Now we can also create a nice summary table by grouping the metadata by sample ID and SC doublet finder class and calculating the total count of cells in each group and the percentage of doublets and singlets for each sample. So that's our doublet summary. So as you can see, around 90% of cells were classified as singlets and then around 9 to to, yeah, 9% were classified as doublets. And of course, we can save this table onto a file, which I do in this line here. So I'm just saving it onto our um, doublet finder um, folder. Remove this, because we have just one project. And try again. So now we can now we have our doublet summary in this folder with this name. Nice. So in conclusion, this is a very simple workflow for detecting, summarizing and visualizing doublets in single cell RNA-seq data using Sura and SC doublet finder in R. When detecting doublets in single cell RNA-seq data, you often want to test out several tools and even fine tune parameters for each tool. Another tool I've tried that has given me great results and is relatively easy to use is Doublet Finder. But we we'll leave that for the next video. So this is all for today. Squid-tastic. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial or if you have any more suggestions on new topics. Remember, you can also vote at spicedatsquid.com or leave me a comment down below. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.